Hey there, footy fans. Time for a bit more footy fun with Footy Finn here. And now NRL finals week one is done and dusted. There are six teams left in the race and only two games this weekend. So uh, NRL fans, plenty of time to catch up on what's happening and what has happened this past weekend in round one of Rugby World Cup 2023 from France. It has all kicked off. I'm going to give my wrap of round one and then look ahead to next weekend, um, a big matchup um, involving Australia. But anyway, it all kicked off on Friday night, France time, with a crackerjack match, a dream opening match between the hosts, France, and the All Blacks. There is much history between these two nations in Rugby World Cups. And look, it was France who came away with the win there in Paris. Uh, the final score was 27-13. So the final margin was actually two converted tries. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, thanks to a last minute try, I might add. Um, look, I think the All Blacks surprised a lot of people. They seemed to lack a bit of direction there. Um, and uh, just in particularly in the second half, weren't able to get on top of France. Uh, they seem to have this strategy to keep kicking it back to France, uh, which just didn't pay off. Um, and France, um, by the last 10 minutes or so, got away to a nine point lead, uh, which was more than a converted try before scoring the last one. So, look. Massive questions over the coach. There have been the New Zealand coach, Ian Foster, for a long time. He keeps breaking all kinds of the wrong kinds of records for New Zealand. Uh, this loss, amazingly, in the 10th Rugby World Cup was their first ever pool match loss in a Rugby World Cup. So there you go. Uh, one of them, Will Jordan, did get a yellow card for 10 minutes in the second half there as well. So discipline was a bit costly. But I don't think that was um, the, the, the explanation for the 14-point loss. I'm uh, going to run over some others in no particular order. Um, look, England beat Argentina. So this was a bit of a surprise. A lot of English fans were not very optimistic leading into this match. Argentina, of course, are coached by uh, Aussie, Michael Checker. Um, an English player got a red card in the fourth minute for a head-high tackle. Um, and yet, despite playing almost all the match, a man down, 14 against 15, England won on the back of kicking, basically, drop goals and uh, penalty, penalty goals. It was a bit of a hark back to the Johnny Wilkinson era of 20 years ago. Uh, but uh, anyway, Argentina did not fire at all there. Um, Australia. Australia, the Wallabies had a good start. Um, they were against Georgia, who are an up-and-coming nation. Last week, I likened them to, say, uh, Gold Coast Titans on the rise. They did pretty well, scored a couple of tries, uh, but Australia ran away with it um, with uh, four tries, I think, or five in the end. Um, Concerningly, our halfback and new vice captain, Tate McDermott, a young fellow from the Sunshine Coast, got a nasty concussion uh, relatively early in the game, so he'll be out. Uh, ben Donaldson, who's a young up-and-comer, was playing fullback. Um, he got two tries to silence a few critics. Uh, what else happens? South Africa versus uh, Scotland. That was a much anticipated match from what they're calling the pool of death. And Scotland have been very successful in recent years. They've got a fly, fly half or five eighth called Finn Russell, who you might equate to something like a Cameron Munster from the NRL. Sadly, Scotland could not score many points and South Africa won 18-3 in the end. Ireland beat Romania very easily. Ireland, of course, up the men in green, are a favourite for this World Cup. I think they put 80-odd points on the Romanians. Italy beat Namibia fairly easily. Um, um, I forget that. That was almost a cricket score, I think. 
But then the match of the round was the final one. It happened on Monday morning Australian time. Fiji up against Wales. Fiji did upset Wales in the 2007 World Cup and they had a first ever win over England just a few weeks ago in a warm-up match in London. So there was much anticipation of this clash. These two are in the same group as Australia. Some people are still uh, ruling it very possible that they could knock Australia out at this early stage, but who knows? Um, look, Fiji were very good and they were really very unlucky. A lot of people are saying the refereeing, who uh, was an English or British ref, I uh, forget his name, was really quite one-sided and lenient towards Wales. He did give one of the Fijians a yellow card in the second half. Uh, people are saying at least one or another Welshman should have got a, a yellow card, but didn't. Now, Wales seem to have this match won on the back of a stronger uh, second half. Fiji seemed to go to sleep. Um, so with 10 minutes to go, the match seemed to be all sewed up. Amazingly, Fiji scored two tries in the space of about six minutes between, I think, the 73rd minute and the 78th minute. And they got within six points, which is less than a converted try. And the final play of the game, the ball gets spun a double cutout pass out to Semi Radradra. That's right, Semi, the former Parramatta Eel who came before Mike Acevo and is now in rugby union. Semi could have got them a try to get them with one point with a kick still to come to potentially win the match. It was a bounce pass in fairly hot, greasy conditions. Sadly for Sammy, I don't know if he looked up towards the corner post and the defender or not. You'd think he was a shoe in to score it if he just caught the ball, the poor fella. Sadly, it bounced off his chest and into touch. Uh, people are saying maybe maybe the fly half or whoever threw that double cutout should have just gone for a, a safer option. Of course, there's no guarantee that the kicker, because they're down to their third string kicker, would have kicked it. But um, look, heart, thoughts go out to Semi Radradra. Anyway, that's the round one wrap, of course, with five teams in each of the four pools. Some teams have had a buy in round one. So the likes of Tonga, Samoa, and others we haven't um, even seen yet. Uruguay, I think, is another one in that boat. We will see them in the coming days, starting on Friday, but really the match of the round for round two is really Australia versus Fiji. This will happen early Monday morning, I think 1.45 a.m. Australian Eastern Time, Monday morning. It is going to be a monster clash. Um, Fiji are well primed for this. They're on a roll. And um, look, the Wallabies have not been at their best. So um, that is the match of the round. And it, you would think not both of these teams will go through to the knockouts. You'll think that this match could help decide which of the two go through. So anyway, that's it. That's my uh, wrap of the uh, Rugby World Cup. Uh, look out for another feature about which former rugby league players and coaches are involved in this Rugby World Cup. But for now, until next time, uh, I'll catch you in the middle of a ruck somewhere. Don't put your spikes on my back. All right, see ya.